Hi, I'm Damien, a uh, bartender over at Liquid Kitty in West LA, California. And uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the martini. It's a traditional old drink that's been around for a couple hundred years. Um, everywhere you go, you're going to get a different bartender to tell you a different story about what a martini really is. Um, and none of them are wrong. None of them are absolutely right either. The interesting thing about the martini is that it started as a gin-based drink. You know, it was traditionally two-thirds gin and one-third vermouth. Um, uh, dry vermouth. Um, oftentimes they would put a dash of bitters in it. Uh, bitters was developed a couple hundred years ago as a uh, cure for a stomach ache or a headache or any kind of illness that you might have had. Um, so oftentimes a dash of bitters was put in a martini. Over the years the bitters has gone away. I don't know of anyone nowadays that uses bitters in their martini unless it's some kind of really crafty cocktail place with a mixologist who demands to do it. But even that is very rare. Um, over the course of time, gin has fallen out of favor a little bit um, and vodka has taken over. And I think, my opinion is that in the 50s when people would go out uh, for their liquid lunches and they'd have a two martini lunch and uh, they went back to the office, you could literally smell gin, not only on somebody's breath, but in their pores. Uh, vodka was a much cleaner drink. It was easier to drink and mask. So they went out, they, the martini went from gin and it slowly transferred to vodka. Nowadays, in most bars, you're gonna find out, it's, find that it's primarily a vodka drink. Um, here at the Liquid Kitty, our main drink, the Liquid Kitty, is a vodka martini. So when people come in and order a martini, I ask them a couple questions. Do you want vodka, do you want gin? Do you want it straight up? Do you want it on the rocks? Do you want olives? Do you want a twist? Do you like it a little sweet? Do you like it a little dry? Do you really want a martini? Do you want a Gibson? Because a Gibson is a martini, but with, instead of olives or a twist, you get onions with it. Um, so you have to be really careful when somebody orders a martini, or when you're making your own, you kind of have to know what you want and where you're going. The other thing to remember is that it started out with two-thirds of the liquor, whether it was gin or vodka, and one-third vermouth. And that's what we talk about when we talk about dry and sweet. So if you order a martini or you're making your own martini, nowadays there's very, very little vermouth. So we've gone from one-third vermouth to almost none in a martini. Over the course of time, the vermouth has become less and less. I can't I think it was Noel Coward who said, my idea of a martini is a big, big bucket of vodka and then take the vermouth bottle and wave it in the direction of Italy. Um, so that's what we refer to as a, a, a waft of uh, vermouth. So you'll make the drink, you put it in the, mar in the martini glass, and then you just wave the vermouth around it so it gets the, the essence of the, of the vermouth. Another way to make it is you take your mixer glass, you fill it with ice, you pour your vermouth in, and then you dump it out. It's called an in and out martini. Another way to do it is take the martini glass and wash it with vermouth and then dump it out so it's got just the little hint of vermouth in the glass and then you put it in. But really nowadays, almost no vermouth. Um, I've been here, I've been bartending in 30 years, I've been at Liquid Kitty 17, and I think, I don't think I've used a vermouth bottle, I don't think I've touched it unless somebody specifically says, put some vermouth in it. And the term dry martini actually is the opposite of what you think. We use less dry vermouth, the more dry you want it. So it's kind of the opposite. So if they say a very, very dry martini, that means they want no vermouth. Um, Again, nowadays, most people order it really kind of don't know what they want. So I prefer to err on the side of all vodka and no vermouth. If they say there's too much vermouth in this drink, well, they're just crazy. Um, again, traditionally, it's gin. More often than not, it's vodka. As a bartender, you always want to ask. You want to know what they want, and then you make it for them. If you're making it at home, it's a very simple process. So we'll start with the process. We'll take a shaker glass where we build, we're going to build our drink in. I'm gonna fill it with ice. As I said, at Liquid Kitty, the Liquid Kitty Martini is uh, Kettle One. So we'll use Kettle One. It's a pretty long pour. It's a pretty heavy drink here. You're looking at at least four ounces of vodka in your drink. It's a big, big drink. Um, let that sit for a second while we get the glass out. We store our martini glasses in the refrigerator so they're cold when they come out. 
Uh, most drinks that are served without ice. Having a chilled glass keeps the drink cold longer. It also looks good. Uh, we're gonna garnish with an olive. Again, it can get a twist if you don't like olive juice. There's a whole other thing about the martini. Some people want it dirty. Dirty simply means it's got a little bit of olive juice in it. Uh, the dirtier they want it, the more olive juice. It just makes it saltier, a little easier for some people to take. Um, personally, I prefer it with no olive juice. If I want it a little dirty, I'll just put the olives in it. That'll give it that olive salty flavor. A lot of people just want it with a twist, so there's no olive taste at all, and just a hint of lemon. And then again, some people like the uh, onions in it, and that, that's called the Gibson. Here at Liquid Kitty, a Liquid Kitty martini comes with a camel no filter and a book of matches. Because if you're gonna have a martini, you might as well have a smoke with it. So that's just here at Liquid Kitty. Now we'll take our drink, which has been sitting in the vodka, and we'll shake it up. I usually give it three shakes. It's enough to make it really cold and not bruise the, the vodka too much. Um, if somebody says they want it Gretzky, I shake the hell out of it. And then when I pour it out, there's little shards of glass floating in it, and hence the Gretzky. I present the glass in front of the customer, pour the drink into the glass, and there's your liquid kitty martini with the camel no filter and a book of matches. Mint Julep is a traditional southern drink. It's been around for a couple hundred years. And of course, it's associated with the Kentucky Derby in Kentucky. And it's rumored that uh, they sell about 120,000 uh, mint juleps during the weekend of uh, Kentucky Derby, right just at the Kentucky Derby. 